Hi guys, hi, it's Rob G out here in Surprise. Um, I did a wiper motor walkthrough a few months ago, and um, I got some private messages where other haunters and other people were asking if I can do a little more detail wiring instructions for a simple timer for a wiper motor. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and do that. Um, for those who do not do who are, do not know where to get these, I purchased mine through Amazon. Um, these are about anywhere between twelve dollars to twenty dollars all depending on where it's located where it's coming from and the shipping handling handling as well so this is a simple prop controller or it's called a 60 62 timer let me go over the bottom wiring slots right here we get one for trigger one for negative one for positive one for no which is normally open one for c which is your common and one is NC for normally closed. For our application, since we're just going to turn on a wiper motor and turn it off, we're not going to be using this one at all. Um, the dip switches right here, I can't remember when I purchased mine if I had to um, kind of move them to what states they need to be in. But I do know for our, our application, um, it goes from one through four, one being the bottom, four being on top, one being off, two and three being on and four being off. Now do you remember when you are operating a wiper motor and let's say you don't purchase your wiper motor kit from either Fright Props or Monster Guts, you get all everything separately, your power supply, your power adapter, your AC power adapter needs to be 12 volts and it needs to be 5 amps at a minimum. Anything less than 5 amps, you will not be able to operate your wiper motor and it's kind of a waste of time and a waste of money. So. That's something to really consider. I did look in the prices um, last year, I mean last year, last night <laughs> for both sites and they, they're pretty much similar in price. Uh, I think they're off a couple bucks from each other. Um, I think Monster Guts is like 49 something. I don't know the exact change so you figure shipping and handling may be another eight bucks towards that so you're looking a little over you know 55 58 dollars at the possibility for to get those from Monster Guts. Similar also with Fright Props. So with this being um, less than, what what do we have here? We got 32 days to Halloween for 2014. If you don't happen to have anything, you need to get going in order or something because like the second week before Halloween, they may not have them and they may not be able to ship them out within that period of time for your prop. So be, be, think about that. So let's go with the wiring real quick. Now when I purchase this, this, is, this does not come with any power at all. I'm going to be using the power from the wiper motor to power this. And I'm going to be using some pigtails. Some 2.5 by 5.5 millimeter DC pigtails. One's going to be female, other one's going to be male. <clears throat> so the female well, the, they both have the exact same wiring coloration here. One being a solid red, one being striped black and red. It's very kind of hard to tell, but if you look very closely, it's striped black and red. The striped one, I'm going to use as my negative. The solid red color, I'm going to use as my positive. So, let me loosen up all these, all the, the terminal connectors, or whatever you want to call them, the slots. So for the power going in, obviously black's going to be the negative and the red's going to be the positive. I'm not going to tighten it down just yet. I'm going to wait because there's more wires going in those slots. <clears throat> now your pigtail going to your wiper motor to turn it on, the power out going, is done a little differently. The black and red will go to the negative. And your red will not go to positive, but it will go to common. Since that's the only one going to common, or you see, I'm going to tighten that down because nothing else needs to go in there. I might just go ahead and tighten it down so it doesn't slip out. Okay. Now, to power this relay, you need to have some type of power going there. And what I'm going to use, I'm going to use a jumper. It's just a solid little red 
um, durable wire, 22 in gauge. I like to use durable wire for jumpers. Um, the reason being, it's a solid copper piece. It's not stranded like speaker wire. Um, it's total, you can manipulate it, bend it any direction you want it or you need it. That's the reason why I really like using it. And um, it comes into a, like, like a package of 65 feet for about 15 bucks. It may be a little more right now, but last time I, I purchased some a few months ago was about two packages. I think it was 15 bucks a piece. I use this quite a bit. Um, I work at a professional haunted attraction, so some of the stuff we, we work on, um, I need to use this to do to use jumpers for the peekaboos and other simple t timers as well. Excuse me. So, for this, for the nor the NO, the normally open, I'm going to slide that puppy right in there. I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down because nothing else is going in there. Okay. Now the other end of it is going to go to your positive. This slipped out. Okay. So you're wondering how you're going to trigger this, how you're going to turn this on. Well, there's a couple of ways of doing it. One way is a thumb trigger, which has two wires, one green being for trigger, and black is actually going to be your power, which is going to go to your positive. So I'm going to go ahead and hook that up. After I go through this part of this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and also show the PIR, how that's hooked up. It has a little more wires. So might as well get the easy one done real quick. Tighten down the green for trigger. Since nothing else is going to negative, go ahead and tighten that, that thing down. Whoops. And your black going to the positive. Okay, I'm going to make sure everything's all tightened down. Okay. Now, before I hook up my wiper motor to the simple timer, I'm going to make sure I have the I have the power, which I do because the green LED light is on. Now, when you are going to turn on your wiper motor, you want it flat like this. You don't want it turned to this direction or upside down or facing um, the, your table or the floor or the ground. Uh, if you do that and you turn on, it's going to whip right right around. It's going to maybe possibly come right back at you, and, and it has some torque to it, so it's going to hurt. I'm speaking from experience, so have it light flat down. Let's make sure it's it's working. Yes, it's working. Place that there. Now my power female is going to go into there. Immediately my simple timer turned on, so we know we have power going to there. Okay. Then my power going out, male going into female. Okay, so that's all hooked up. This is the little wheel right here. You can operate it for a couple seconds by just barely turning it, or even up to a full hour if you wish to, by going all the way um, clockwise. Going counterclockwise, I only want to operate it for a few seconds. So I'm going to just turn it barely, hit the thumb trigger, and there you go. Pretty simple. All right. Now I'm going to remove the thumb trigger and I'm going to go over the PIR. So I'm going to loosen the, the trigger in the positive and slide those two out. Right here at the nose's. <laughs> the reason why it's turning on by itself is because it's the first time it's being powered. It got disconnected, so when it's being powered, it'll turn off. So, 
keeps on slipping out. <laughs> okay, stop it. I'm going to kind of hook it just so it can stay. <clears throat> now, I have a PIR. I'm going to show you for demonstration purposes. This is one I never used before, but I used many of them in the past. Um, they come with four wires green being for trigger, your black being for negative, and your white and red for our simple timer will go to positive. So I have my PIR over there, kind of want to move it a little bit of away from me. Now when I immediately hook, it up, hook the power to the simple timer, it will turn on. The PIR takes anywhere between 30 seconds up to 2 minutes for it to fully warm up. After it warms up, it's ready for activation. You do got to remember when you do do use the PIR, it's not like the thumb trigger. Thumb trigger you can hit immediately, it turns on. Thumb trigger you can hit immediately, it turns on. The PIR it has to have enough time to turn off, then you're able to turn it back on by activation. So you grab the wiring for that. I'm going to straighten these out because these are all kind of crazy looking. I'm going to hook up my power first, which is going to go to your positive. Tighten that puppy down. Okay. My negative, I got to loosen somewhat because I tightened it down previously. And my trigger. Yeah, trigger's loose. So when you first turn it on, when you first have all four wires to your simple timer, your PIR will turn on red. The light um, being that way, like I said before, it needs to warm up. So I, I'm going to let that warm up. And I'll talk a little bit more. Um, remember, you can also use the P PWMs, the power width modulator, um, through the middle of your prop. Um, you can control your speed, like in my previous video, though it's a nice addition um, to control your exact speed the way you want it. So, if, you're, if you don't want to, you kind of want to figure out if you want faster RPM or slower RPM. Remember, these are the, the pigtails that slide in and out. You can put them in different uh, different pins. Um, they don't always work well together. There's some, something you got to figure out. Um, either going, going clockwise or counterclockwise and or increase or decrease in its speed. So, hopefully the PR is warmed up, so I'm going to Turn the dial a little bit. Wave my hand over it. There you go. So as you see, see I barely got in that area and it just turned on. I, I think the reason why it's activating so quickly is because I'm in it's in its I'm in near the beam area. And also, there's quite a bit of light in this room. Let me just turn up, turn up the time there a little bit. I'm pretty sure if I set it <laughs> to a different area of the de table, it wouldn't activate as much. So. Wait, my hand over it. Oh, it's still warming up, I believe. Maybe that's what it is. So, that, there we go.
Now with the light being on right there, and you can hear the motor in the background, with the light still being on, it won't activate. It has to turn off completely. So it turned off. There, it turned right back on. That's what I meant about the comparison to the PIR to the thumb trigger. This has to turn off by itself in order for it to be activated again. So there you go. So there is the wiring for the simple timer. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this so it doesn't turn on. So it's pretty simple. It's not too difficult at all. Um, you can find everything readily available online. Um, your simple timer, your pigtails, your wiper motor kit, and um, <laughs> only thing you probably need to buy from the home from the from your um, home improvement store is maybe some uh, additional wire. And you can use speaker wire if you have that. That works just as well. I just prefer personally to use doorbell wire because it's it's much more um, maneuverable. So there's that. So any questions or any comments, just give me a holler. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye.